good morning everybody today welcome to our webinar on building engaging community experiences with community cloud uh, today we have with us aditya pagadala who is a senior member of technical staff at salesforce and also shubhi goyal she's also a senior member of technical staff at salesforce and i am shashank srivatsava i'll be your host for today i'm a developer relations manager at salesforce and aditya and shubhi are actually from our engineering team who builds the community cloud for you so they have so much interesting information to share with you today for our admins and developers who want to build on the community cloud for their customers before we go ahead let me tell you that we might make uh, some forward looking statements today about features that are not yet generally available so in case if you have any purchasing decisions that you want to make don't make don't base them based on what we're going to talk about today so uh, we're all of a social feel free to reach out to us tweet tweet uh, your thoughts about it and stuff like that we are available on twitter at salesforce devs uh, on facebook as salesforce developers and on linkedin as well and we also have our youtube channel salesforce developers where you can find all our webinar content and other recorded session content uh, even this webinar will be posted shortly there as well and please also note that this webinar is being recorded and there will be a recording posted on this on the same page that you use to register for this webinar right so you don't have to worry about uh, whether it's being recorded and stuff we'll post the slides and the uh, recording as well on the same url but uh, today we are also going to do live q and a where you get to post questions using the questions tab that you see inside go to webinar you can post the question as you get them. You don't have to wait uh, towards the end or something. And towards the end, we will have a live Q&A session where we will uh, answer as many questions as possible uh, today for the, the ones we get from you, right? So feel free to post your questions. Um, and a little more about uh, technical issues and stuff, a uh, little more housekeeping. If you have any technical issues with audio or video or uh, screen uh, freezing or uh, slides getting stuck or audio lagging or something like that just quit the web go to webinar and join it again and that usually fixes the issues for you right so uh, we'll try our best to answer as many questions as possible towards the end if you don't get them answered you can always feel free to reach out to us on our developer forums so with that uh, let me hand over to aditya who's going to take us through the agenda for today and uh, take it forward from there over to you aditya uh, thank you very much Shesha. Hey everyone, good morning. Uh, Aditya Pagdala, Engineer in Salesforce Community Cloud. Uh, let's get started with the agenda, what we're gonna do in the next 40 to 50 minutes. Uh, we're gonna learn what a Salesforce community is, uh, what are the use cases of the Salesforce community. Then we'll try to understand the capability of Salesforce community. We'll create and customize a community live and we'll learn how to do the administration and management from CMC. At the end, we'll do a future roadmap trying to talk about uh, beautiful innovations that Salesforce is doing in the coming releases. All right, so with no delay, let's jump into the show. First thing first, what is a community? In a recent webinar, uh, one of my PM described it like this. A community is a portal which is not only for your users, but also for the users external to your org. The users don't need to be part of your org. It's simply saying, Communities are online platform for you to bring in collaboration in a group of people who share a common mission or goal. You can think of these online collaboration spaces as a way to channel and leverage the knowledge that your customers and your users are having to do the work. As I said that external users can be part of this community. That doesn't mean that community is outside your org. All the data that is there in community lives inside your org and every data that is there in your org can be shared with the community too. Don't worry about access controls, your admin controls everything. In short, community built using Salesforce community provides a window to the outside world into your Salesforce world. Community uh, technically solves use cases of three personas, customers, partners, and employees. So let's start with customers. Customers, the name says, are the direct customers to your org, and uh, Salesforce has something called as customer portal for this, which lets, uh, Customers access their data like accounts, services, ticket, bills, so on. Let them edit it and even let them participate in a business requirement. We have some service communities which let customers share the experiences and expertises with other customers. There are help centers which support customer making purchasing decisions. In one shot, customer portal is a one-stop shop 
for all the information about your company and your products. Now let's go to partners. The major use case of the partners is to reduce the gap between your org and your partners and thereby enabling partner relationship management. This can handle B2B commerce, uh, say in SCM use cases, uh, inventory management, having a flash sales, etc. This can do franchise management, agent broker portal management, like streamlined onboarding, sharing leads, opportunity management, giving the quotes, example like that. Last but not the least, let's go to employee portals. The main use case for the employee portals will be like to redesign the whole internet of a corporation. You can use this as an easy help desk tool for recruiting, onboarding, and HR services. You can do collaboration with respect to the work and content and then have engaging apps too. All right, now that we have seen what a community is, what are the personas in the community, let's try to see a live demo of community. Okay, our very old friend Astro owns a company called Capricorn Cafe, and he recently launched a portal for all his customers. Let's see how the portal looks like. All right, there it goes. So this is a live portal of Capricorn Cafe company. You can see the brand of, Cap of Capricorn Cafe. So there is no way the customers will be knowing that this is built on Salesforce. You have a search tool where you can quickly search the content that is present inside the community. I have a quick navigation tabs where I can navigate to home, order, shipment, products, etc. Down to it, I find a beautiful carousel component. But this is making the community really vibrant. Let's come down a bit. Uh, there are future topics. Future topics are uh, handpicked topics by community to showcase on the home page. The community is trying to future these content to you whenever you log in. Let's get into one of the future topic and see what it is. Okay, this is the topic detail page. I can see the banner image on top of it. I have the topic details. I can see the discussions. What are the discussions that are happening on top of this topic? I have trending articles. These are the articles which are being frequently used by customers in the last few days. I have an option to ask a community. That's pretty cool. Where I can give the question details. I can have other details. I can add the topics, etc. In discussion, I can see the number of people who viewed this question, number of comments made, a number of upwards pretty cool stuff right let's see what's there uh, i can embed a youtube video too cool all right i see a link over here let's go over that in this i have a home tab which we just saw i have a my profile tab. let's see that okay here it is as the name says my profile is everything about the login user I can see my profile pic. I can see about me, the details about me. I can see the user details. I can also see the activity that the user performed. These are the recent feeds. I have a cases tab where I can see the cases that I raised. I have an option to make a post right from here. And I also have influence tab, which shows a number of people following me, number of people whom I am following, number of posts made, comments and likes etc okay now let's go back now that we see a live community however a couple of weeks back astro has no way to solve this use case so astro come to cody and ask the helper building a smart collaboration tool for all his customers we all know right how important it is to solve issues quickly and we all know what cody suggested why didn't you try salesforce communities right Matt. So let's help Cody to build a community for Astro. Building a community is a very simple. All you need to go is go to the setup page, search for all communities. You have a link, click on it, and the communities option will pop right in front of you. There is a new community button. Let's see what it has. Okay, it's asking me to pick up a template. If you remember the Astro's use case, Astro want to build a community for its customers to collaborate, share the experiences and expertises, do Q&A. Salesforce is having a pre-built template for this called customer service. You can see it over here. 
Salesforce already have a few other portals like customer account portal, partner central portal, and of course, you can always build your own template. Okay, let's see customer service and what it offers. Okay, here are the features. Uh, customer service is featuring articles, nice Q&A and cases, exactly what Astro wants. It has collaboration via groups, discussion, and it can organize content using topics and solve issues quickly. Bang on. It can do the customizations and it's a smart. Right, looks like this matches everything that Astro wants. So let's do that. Okay, it's asking me to enter the name. So let's quickly type the name. And let's do the create. Okay, it's saying some alphanumerical. Let's do that. Let's say create. All right. During this creation, Salesforce is trying to create a community for you. It's creating the pages, instantiating the components, build the navigations, giving you a domain, and whatnot. It does a bunch of stuff. You don't need to worry about all this. Uh, all you need to do is click and Salesforce lets take care of everything. All right, it opens something called as community workspaces. Let's see what it is. Community workspace, also known as community management console, is a one-stop show for everything you wanted to do with respect to management and administration of your community. There are multiple tiles on it. Let's see one by one. The first one is builder. So what is builder? The name says the builder is used to build your community. If you want to customize your community, you and UI, if you want to change the look and feel of the community, builder is where you have to go. So builder is technically the edit mode of your community. All right, for explaining the builder, let's call upon my colleague, Shubhi, or you. Thanks everyone for tuning in. My name is Shubhi and I'm really excited to be here to be presenting all these amazing features that Salesforce communities have to offer. So like Aditya explained, communities are a great way through which you can collaborate with your customers, your partners, and your employees. And to do that, you want nothing but the best experience for all your end users. Now, when you want to achieve that, the first thing that comes to your mind is uh, how would you be able to customize the look and feel of the community? To do this, we have this amazing tool called the Lightning Community Builder. So the Lightning Builder is uh, a lot like uh, the Lightning App Builder that you see inside your internal org in the sense that it helps you choose from an array of uh, standard components. You can bring in your own custom components. You can control every design aspect of different pages across your communities. And the best of all, you can also customize the branding and theming based on your own company's use case. So let's uh, do this. Uh, let's help Cody, who is going to be our community admin. And let's see if he can build a community from scratch and take it to a professional looking one, like the one we were looking at earlier during the session today about the Capricorn Cafe community. So let's quickly click on Builder and see where it takes us. So this is what the Lightning Community Builder looks like. It's basically a what you see is what you get kind of an editor. As you can see, the page is divided into distinct sections. Uh, the, there is a header on the page. The content area itself is divided into different sections. And there's a footer region as well. On the left hand side, you can see that there are various customizations that you can do. You have a component palette. There is an option to change the theme settings. You can modify or look at your page structure. And uh, there are also a bunch of administrator settings that you can perform right here. So to help Cody, let's do this. Uh, the first thing that Cody would really want is see if he can customize the overall theme of the community. Now, when we say theme, we're basically referring to the global components on your community, such as the header, the footer, the search bar, and even the profile menu. To do this, uh, Salesforce offers you a bunch of out-of-the-box themes, which are pre-built. You do not have to uh, write them from scratch. There's no custom code involved in it. So Cody finds this option to change the theme and he clicks on it. As soon as he does that, he's given with a 
array of choices that he can pick from. As you can see, all themes have different look and feel. Some of them have uh, a prominent content area. Some of them have a prominent banner image with a search bar. And Cody particularly likes the one which has a nice big banner image with a couple of call to action buttons because he thinks it will help him run his own cafe use case. So he clicks on this community theme and uh, he again takes a look at all the features that it has to offer. It helps you to promote content through a nice and shiny banner. It also helps you to select multiple theme layouts. These themes are highly responsive in the sense that they look just as amazing across all your devices, be it mobile or tablet. And they're also highly customizable. You can control a lot of aspects of these themes and uh, customize it based on your own requirement. So as you can see on the left, uh, this is how the themes are going to look like. The first one is for your home page. If you scroll down, you see that how the theme is going to look like across other pages. And the last one is about how amazing this theme is going to look on your mobile devices. So Cody is pretty excited about uh, activating this theme. He hits on activate theme. I'm going to do replace and start fresh because I want to remove earlier customizations that have been done. So behind the scene, it, behind the scene, it's basically going to change the uh, global look and feel for the community. So as you can see, I just customized uh, the theme. So I have a nice banner that starts showing up. And to customize it further, Cody wants to change the background image because he thinks he has better images, which 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 are based on his own use case. So he clicks on the banner image, and as soon as he does that, there's a properties panel that pops up. The properties panel lets you configure various aspects of your current component. There's a way to customize the background, the layout, the content on the page, and so on. So Cody clicks on background, and he finds an option to upload a new image. So he clicks on it, goes to his org asset library, and picks a banner that he really likes. So as you can see, the banner image is now changed. Let's see if we can customize the content on the banner so that it meets the cafe requirement. There are other aspects which you can control, such as the visibility of the caption text. So I hide the caption text. I modified the title text to say something like fancy a couple. I can also change the subtitle text um, and say something like tune in to know more. So cool, the, as you can see, the text on your banner is also modified now. There are a bunch of other options. You can see that uh, the blue color doesn't, the blue color on the call to action buttons doesn't quite go well with your overall theme. So you might want to go to the primary button section and change it to a nice, maybe a brown looking color. So there you go. This is how easy it is to customize the header banner for your theme, and it also lets you control a lot of aspects of it. The next feature of theme is that uh, Cody would want to see if he can upload his own company logo because he does not want this community to look like a Salesforce community, but he wants his own company's branding. So he navigates to the images section under themes, and there's an option to upload uh, the company logo. He knows exactly what he wants. He finds the Capricorn Cafe logo that he already has on his system. And he clicks on Upload. With that being done, you can see that on the top left, uh, the logo now says Capricorn Cafe. And uh, through this, uh, there has been, through this, it helps with the branding of uh, the community. Next up, uh, to customize the theme, there are a bunch of other options. For example, you can specify a complete color palette for your community. So these are the colors that run across different pages on your community. And you can handpick each of these colors. They'll help you modify the text color or the action color and so on. Now, what if you don't want to do, what if you don't want to handpick all these colors? You can simply generate palette from an image. So to go with the current theme, I'm quickly going to pick uh, the coffee banner again and see what palette it generates for me. As soon as I click on add, 
If you scroll down, you see that all your action buttons now have a nice brown color. So everything blends in quite well. We've achieved a uniform theme. Let's go back and see what all other theme customizations we have. Uh, there's another way through which you can control all the fonts across your theme. So you click on it and you're given with all these font options that you can change as well. So that's about customizing the theme of your community. Another great thing about Lightning Community Builder is that uh, these uh, it's used to generate highly web responsive pages. So all your community pages are going to look just as fancy across uh, all the devices that you may have. And, a quick, and to take a quick uh, look at how they're going to look, uh, let's see, let's click on the preview and change the view mode. So let's see how this website is going to look like on the mobile view. As you can see, it looks just as nice. And uh, this is this makes Cody really happy because it's one less thing for him to worry about. So that's pretty cool. Now let's go back to Builder and see what other customizations that can be done. So you click on the desktop view again. And the next thing that Cody wants to do is see if he can get a feed publisher component on the home page because through a feed publisher component, a user can very easily post questions to the community. So he goes to the component palette and he's given with a choice of different standard components. All these components render different types of data. They all have different look and feel and you can customize all of them. So Cody finds the one which is called the feed publisher and he drags and drops it to a section that he likes. As soon as that's done, like you can see, the feed publisher component now starts showing up. There is its very own properties panel through which Cody can again customize different aspects of this component and see what works for him. So as if uh, this component will actually give a look and feel of exactly how it's going to look like for the end user. To do that, just click on preview and this is basically the live preview for your community. So it lets you do it lets you do it lets you interact with all the components on the page as well. Cool. Let's go back to the builder and see what else we can do. Now Cody has been working very diligently on a custom component since the past couple of days because Cody loves to code and there are no surprises there. So he's thinking if he can bring in his own custom component inside the community. All he has to do is go to the settings page, find the developer tab and click on developer console. Now this developer console is exactly the same as the one that you see in your internal org. This is the custom component that Cody has been working on. It's a nice uh, carousel that he has built from scratch. And all Cody has to do now is implement this particular interface, which is called force community available for all page types. As soon as that's done, Cody hits on save and he can now go back to the builder and expect the component to start showing up anytime. So he opens the component palette again, goes back, goes down to the bottom and sees that there is a coffee slider component that starts showing up. So the only thing left for Cody to do now is find a nice section where he can drag and drop it. He does just that. And this is the nice component that Cody has been working on. It starts showing up in no time and Cody can go ahead and do all the flaunting that he wants. Cool. So this is how the home page now looks like. Uh, as you can see, we have customized it to look this professional in almost no time with just a couple of clicks. And that's about it. So now Cody is wondering if he can control other pages inside the community. On the top left corner, there is uh, an option through which you can navigate uh, through all the pages in the community. It's called the page menu. And if you see, there are again a bunch of standard pages that are available. Cody can pick any one of them and start customizing them. For now, I'm going to open the user profile page and see what that looks like. So the user profile page is meant to furnish data about the user's own profile. As you can see, there's a huge monolithic component pre-configured on this page, which displays different kinds of information like Aditya showed us previously. And if you click on this component, there's a nice properties panel that shows up again. You can customize various other aspects. 
So if you can see on this component, there is an option to show the related list. Now, what if I want to hide the related list? So there is a option to control the visibility. I do uh, uncheck uh, show related lists. So my component uh, has started hiding the related list part of it. And what, what if Cody doesn't like the feel, uh, the look and feel of uh, this component? So there is a very handy tool called the undo option. So Cody can quickly undo and get his component back to the previous state. So this is a really cool feature, if, especially if you're customizing in multiple iterations, you can always go back to a previous step. You can play around with a lot of settings and you don't have to keep a track of what all customizations you made as you go forward. So that's pretty cool. Moving on, uh, let's talk about uh, uh, some components which are special in the sense that they do not render uh, static data and they render dynamic data based on the page context. So such components are called the record components. Uh, like you can see, uh, right now I'm looking at a record banner component. And if I drag and drop this component to the page, uh, I'll see that uh, this basically renders the data dynamically in the sense that since I'm on the user page, I, am, I should be able to see the user banner. So, as you can see, uh, there is a new banner that starts showing up and sh it shows uh, the user that I'm logged in through. So this is how these record components work. If you click on the component, you see that on the properties panel, there's a record ID, which is a dynamic record ID in the sense that it picks up the user ID from the page context and renders the relevant data. So that's how powerful these components are. They work both on static data as well as dynamic data. Now let's uh, quickly go back and see if Cody can add his own cu custom pages. So if you open the page menu again, on the bottom side, you see that there is an option to create a new page. Cody hits on that and he sees that he is again given with two options. He can either create a standard page, which is like a generic page, or he can create a Salesforce object page. So let's hit on standard page and see what it does. So as you can see, it gives you different options to choose from. Uh, all these uh, have different page layouts. They have different column ratio. So I pick the one which is two columns, two is to one ratio, and hit on next. I give any name, and I can also specify the URL. These are highly custom, and you can match them with your own uh, community use case. And I hit on create. So now I have a blank canvas from which uh, I can start uh, customizing this particular page. Uh, I can play around with any of the components which are available, be it standard or custom. So this is how you can basically create a generic page with no underlying data. Now let's see what the other option to create a Salesforce object page was. If I click on new page again, uh, there is an option to create the object pages. Now when I click on it, uh, it gives you a list of all the Salesforce objects that are there within your org, because we all know that the crux of all Salesforce data are S objects. So you can pick any, um, any S object that you like. I'm gonna pick account and hit on create. Now one intelligent thing that it does is creates three pages for you. One is for the account detail, another is for the account list, and another one is for the account related list because you need all three pages as you're navigating between different objects in your community. So let's hit on create and see what pages we get. So as you can see, the page now is called the account detail page. I again have a nice monolithic component which displays the record information. Again, this is a dynamic component. It picks up the record ID from the account ID. And this is how the S object pages look like. They work dynamically. So that's pretty cool again. Now let's do this. Uh, let's go back to the home page and see what all, what all, what are the some some of the other capabilities of the builder. So now say you have built an amazing looking community. It looks really nice. You've applied a nice theme to it, and now you want to export it so that next time when you're creating a community, you do not have to build from scratch. So go to the settings page, open the developer tab and there is an option to export a template. 
So you specify some information for your template metadata and click on export. As soon as you do that, basically next time when you're creating a community, you do not have to build from scratch and you can pick this exported template. Also, if you think that your community is going to be useful for other users out there on the App Exchange ecosystem, you can quickly package it and distribute it as well. The next great option is export a page. So as you can see, it gives you a list of all the pages that are there within your community. You can quickly pick one and click on export. When you do that, uh, the next time when you're building a page, you don't have to again build from scratch and you can start working on an existing customized page. So that's just about how powerful Builder is. It's basically the editor for your community. You can basically add uh, any number of customizations on it and it lets you control all the aspects, all the design aspects of your community. So all that Cody has to do now is go click on publish and wait for his amazing looking community to start showing up to all the end users. So with that, uh, handing over back to Aditya. Aditya, you can go ahead, add all the amazing content that you have, and let's see what, what's up next. Thank you very much, Shuvi. Uh, just one question. So did you just complete the, and build the whole look and feel of my portal in the last 10 minutes? Yeah. Including the mobile? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Let, let's see what's more in store for us. Let's continue the awesomeness. Coming back to the community workspaces, the one stop for modeling, one stop for administration and management. The next tab on this is the modelization tab. All right. So, community is all about data. We all know that. And uh, we want a strict control on what kind of data that is flowing into your community and what is going out. For that, Salesforce provides to you something called as modelization. So, modelization is like, as the name says, it's to apply or modelate the data. You can create the rules. Say, for example, uh, you don't want to have any post or a comment with a banned keyword, or you want to flag any post or a comment which has an unparliamentary language. You can build n number of these content criteria and member criteria, and you can add to the moderation rules and apply it to the feeds, or, or for the matter of fact, any data. The next tab in the community workspaces is content targeting. Let's see it. Okay, it says topics. So in the internal log, Salesforce provides you a tool called topics to organize your accounts, cases, leads, and management extra. Salesforce extended the same template to the communities too. So you can use these topics to organize your feeds, collaboration, articles, knowledge, everything. Salesforce primarily provides you two types of topics, navigation topics and feature topics. So let's see navigation topics first. Navigation topics are something for a hierarchical organization. So treat that a topic is a folder and you want to create a subfolder. Let's say uh, you have a service community and you publish a lot of articles at APAC level. So you can create a topic for APAC and put all those articles in the APAC topic. Now you, you have uh, articles at India level. You can create a subtopic India. I can put all your articles into that Indian topic. Similarly, you can create a grandchild topic too. You can extend up to a depth of three and the width of 10. All right, so let's go ahead and create a navigation topic. It's pretty simple. Enter the topic name and click add. All right. Click add. I also want to create one more navigation topic. Espresso machine. Okay. So here we also have an option to upload the image to a topic which will be visible in the banner of topic detail page. For now we are good. And let's click save. Simple. The next one is the future topics. As we have seen in the live community, future topics are hand-picked topics that the community owner wants to flaunt on the home page. In this use case, let's see, uh, let's flaunt coffee calendar machine and espresso machine and show it on our home page so that the customers, whenever they log in, can see this on the home page. Let's also try to add image for this. All right, the image is added. And let's click save. Simple, right? Yep. So let's see what's the next tab is. 
So Astro's community is a service community. So he has a lot of knowledge that he wants to share with his customers. So he created a lot of articles in his org. And this article management tab displays all the articles that are present inside his org. We can also segregate with using data category group and data categories. Let's open an article. Okay, I have an option to add topic here too. So technically I can organize all my feeds and articles in one topic detail page. Let's add coffee machine grinder and espresso. And click save. All right, pretty simple to add topic here. And the last tab in this is automatic topic assignment. This is a recent innovative feature Salesforce offer. So uh, this is to automate the topic assignment for articles. For the Astros community, he's creating maybe 10,000 articles every day and he can't come to each community and assign topic to each article to display it on topic data page. So what this tab will do is this tab will create a rule, a mapping between the data category and the topic. So let's try to create and see what it has. I selected copy, a group of coffee and category of all and I say coffee grinder machine, espresso machine. And I click save. So what happened here? For every article that get published in this group, in this category, automatically assign espresso machine and coffee grinder machine topics to the article. We also have a checkbox to apply the same rule for the existing articles too. Nice. Let's go back. And the next tab is the dashboards. All right. Now you have set up a career community. You have created the rules for it. You have set up the topics. Now, after the community went live, you want to see how your community is faring. You want to understand the analytics of your community. You want to understand the sentiment of the community. And this is the place where you want to do. Dashboards enables to monitor your community. However, as of now, there are no dashboards present because we didn't create any. However, we have an option to import a package from the App Exchange, which contains a rich set of dashboards and reports. And the next one is CMS Connect. CMS Connect is another innovative product from Salesforce, which lets you connect to third party servers to import the content. Say you want to, you have a website and you also, you also want your community to have the same look and feel of your website. You can use CMS Connect and import all the header, footer sort of things from your third party server and apply it to your community so that there'll be a uniform experience. The last one is administration. Name says it is to administrate the com community. So let's go and activate the community from settings. So I also have an option to add the user profiles who will be part of this community. So let's add uh, analytics, security, cloud security user and cloud marketing profile. I can click save. Post this, what happens? Every system administrator, every analytics cloud security user and custom marketing profile will be having access to this community. The last tab is the guided setup. As the name says, it is to set up your community. It is to onboard a newly administer, new administrator. All right. Now that we have uh, created the content, created the monetization rules, created the targeting rules and the dashboards, let's see a live use case. Let's go back to Capricorn Cafe. Okay, it's not yet published. So we got a live community over here. Capricorn Cafe. I can see all the Capricorn Cafe logos and customizations that should be did. All right. Now let's the, the, let's have a use case where Appy, who recently purchased uh, espresso machine, espresso and a coffee grinder machine, and he has a couple of questions to answer. So what Appy can do? Appy can go to the community and search for his use case. Coffee machine. This displays a bunch of articles the discussion that happened around coffee machines. However, this is not the use case that Appy is looking at. So he can go ahead and make a post. He can also add a topic of coffee grinder. And coffee espresso machine that we just created. So for this, we can find the discussion in my profile. 
right see I, I can see the component i can see the feed post that i made and i can click on the topic to get into the topic detail page on the other side astro and cody who are the owner of this community know how to solve this use case so what he did quickly find him Topics are not part of this. There are the cases. Okay, let's find that feed that Abby made. All right. So Abby asked this question: What regular maintenance should be performed on a coffee grinder? And I know the answer. And go and type and click yes. Simple, right? Now that happy use case got addressed. He didn't he didn't pick up his phone, contact any customer service representative, but his question is answered. Now assume he has one more use case for the espresso machine which was broken, and and he wants to get to the community to get the answers how to fix his espresso machine. So Appy does the same thing. He come back, search for espresso machine knowledge. Uh, looks like nothing solves his use case of fixing an espresso machine. So he can go ahead and raise a case, which he can do from the contact support form. Okay. So let's type my espresso machine is broken. How to fix it? If there are any known knowledge around this case, the Salesforce will suggest you the articles over here. But however, as there are none, let's go ahead and submit the use case. All right, now that my case is submitted, one of the customer representative from Capricorn Cafe or will pick up this case and take it to closure. Pretty good, right? Pretty simple, no code, low code, all the issues are solved. So let's get back to the use case. Okay, we covered community builder. Let's see what we have learned in the last 40, 45 minutes. All right, we have learned what is a community. We have learned how to create a community and how to do the customization using this awesome tool called Community Builder. We have learned how to organize and administer the community with the workspaces. And we have did a live use case too. So all this has been done with low code, no code principles, and it's pretty simple to achieve these targets. Innovator releases every year and the com community cloud is uh, no exception for this. The future roadmap for this community cloud, the first thing is hybrid mobile app. Mobile is very important, we all know that, and we all love to use a mobile phone, who doesn't? So everyone wants to have a mobile app for the community, and Salesforce here to it, and it started giving an option for you to create and export a mobile app from your own community. You can Salesforce take care of publishing it to the app builder, sorry, app, uh, Play Store and App Store. And the second feature, it's a very innovative feature that's coming up is native content. We have seen in the workspaces a CMS Connect where we are able to import the preferences and content that were created and hosted in the third party server. But with native content, this can be done right from Salesforce community. How cool is it, right? Wow. All right then, this is what we have in stores for our community cloud and the communities. Let's get you back to Shashank. Shashank, over to you. All right, that was um, fantastic. And looks like the community builder is like one of the greatest tools ever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. definitely. And so much functionality that uh, uh, people can basically leverage to basically customize lots of things in their community. And that was uh, uh, really good. Thank you so much, guys, for that uh, demo. That was, uh, I'm, I'm sure even our attendees are going to find them useful. And uh, guys listening, uh, if you want to learn more about uh, community cloud or you want to basically try doing it yourself uh, or if you want to probably, probably do things like creating a custom layout or something like that there's so much content on trailhead for you to try out uh, and learn from and get hands on and everything and there are a few links here uh, if you don't have access to this uh, slides yet you can just fly uh, just search by the names that you see otherwise uh, the slides also will be shared with you eventually and you can check them out
but you don't have to wait just go to trailhead and do community cloud there's loads of great content for that so with that uh, let me uh, go over to our q a section so we have uh, lots of questions lots of great questions that we got and uh, since we have too many awesome people on our uh, engineering team at community cloud we have a dedicated special q a panel today uh, and we have uh, nitesh shitej and anusha jo joining us today uh, to answer your questions uh, and uh, they are they are dedicated uh, specialists in answering questions if i can say that all right so uh, let's see uh, if we can uh, shoot some questions to them um, based on what you asked you you asked for and let's see uh, if you can help us out with these answers all right so let's go let's go look at a few questions um, the first question so there are uh, some questions let's pick um, some some questions here so uh, there is a question for uh, around templates so the, we spoke about the employee community in the beginning so there's a question about uh, uh, what template is the what template is the employee community nitesh yeah so uh, there are a lot of templates as we saw are available uh, in the internal log using which we can create a community but for employee community the best template to use for is the salesforce tabs and visual force which is on the classic aloha ui but we do have a customers which are using customer service uh, template as well uh, because it's a lightning ui it's a more rich uh, ui so customer service also can be used uh, to create an employee community okay that makes sense all right so um, so there's a, a small question about can we change the favicon favicon uh, and it shows salesforce by default um, yes, so we can change our favorite icon. So as Salesforce is well known for customization and personalization, and we have already provided a platform. Uh, Shubi has just demoed the uh, community builder where, where we can do a lot of customizations and we can do a lot of changes. So yes, we can change our favorite icons. We can change the company logo, uh, whatever logo, whatever icon we wanted to put, we can put there, put there itself easily. Okay, so there is uh, another question around uh, customizing page layout. So can you customize this page layout, like add more columns and stuff like that? Exactly. So uh, Salesforce provides a lot of pages out of the box for a lot of objects which are available in Salesforce. But if a user wants to, or if a community admin wants to create their own new pages, so we do have an option available as we just saw in the demo. Uh, when we When we try to create a new page, we get a lot of options to select a layouts. We do have one column layout. We do have two column layout. We do have three column layout with different ratios. So assume like we have we are we are selecting for two column layout. So there we can select a ratio whether we want uh, one is to one ratio between the page or we want two is to one ratio. So there are different layouts available in the system using which we can select and create our own custom uh, pages. Okay, sounds good, Nitesh. Uh, we have more questions for you, by the way. Are you ready? yes why not so uh, so there's a question around uh, uh, during customization how frequently uh, are these automatic changes saved and in case there is an internet connection loss or something uh, what is the status so yes so as we saw the publish option in the community builder uh, after we do customize or after we do create our page we have to publish the community so that the pages the changes which we have made on the community gets reflected into the live community so uh, there is no immediate saved available as of now but yes just to save whatever changes you have done you have to keep on publishing the community as early as possible so that if you have a doubt that your internet connection goes off you should not lose your changes okay and uh, so there is one more question around uh, uh, i mean few questions around uh, a similar theme like uh, can you use custom themes and custom templates instead of the ones that we get and uh, how do we do that and uh, to answer that we have anusha who's going to basically take that question for us yes uh, you can use custom theme layouts uh, so we have a component which you need to implement uh, in developer console to be able to get the custom theme layout uh, you can refer uh, lightning components guide we have an entire section that's dedicated to uh, how how well we can customize communities using theme layouts and uh, other stuff we'll be posting the link uh, right after the webinar for the for the help doc for the same all right yeah that makes sense thank you so much uh, anisha for that and uh, we have some more questions for uh, kshitej 
so uh, so this is one question around uh, so once exported will the exported template uh, can it be used on any any other systems apart from salesforce or is it only for the salesforce environment how does that work hey hi all uh, so the template that you export is meant to be imported as another community yeah so basically uh, it's not exactly for an external system or a third yes. party system yes. right okay that makes sense okay i hope that answers that question so uh, there is uh, another question around uh, uh, signing up and what if you are not a member of the community at yet and uh, is there self service features and stuff like that yeah exactly so yeah okay so we do have a self service option available uh, if you are if community admin is not adding a member into the community there is an option under the administration workspaces and there is a tab called login and registration uh, from there if community admin enables the self service registration then any user any external user from outside world can can register themselves they don't need to con they don't need to contact to community admin or any uh, any salesforce person to to get themselves registered and also uh, i see there is one more question saying that uh, how how we can add the members into the community so as uh, aditya demoed under the administration workspaces so there was a workspace called community management console from there under administration tab you can see that we can add members to the community so as you know that we can create users inside the salesforce internal org and every user belongs to some license and all licenses or each license is connected to some profiles so to get to give the easiness to the community admins we have added a tab called members where community admin can select all the profiles which he wants to add into add into the community so let's say i am selecting a standard user profile for employee community so all the users who are part of standard user profile or all the users who got created on the license which is connected to standard user profile will get added to the community once the community admin saves the standard user profile under the administration members tab okay so we have one question for kshitej here uh, so uh, do you uh, can you maybe touch upon uh, license costing and how licensing works in the community builder yeah so the costs and licensing are based on uh, the usage if you want exact numbers we suggest you reach out to our uh, sales representatives or search uh, in google for the community cloud licensing plans uh, but the licensing uh, and the costs for customer community customer community plus licenses are based on usage completely okay, that makes sense so we have one question for our uh, speaker should be today as well so should be we, uh, we have used a few uh, acronyms today right and one of them being uh, cms so uh, can you maybe touch upon what a cms is and what do we why do we need a cms system or something like that uh, surely so cms uh, basically refers to the content management system so as you can as you know there in the market there are a couple of uh, great cms options which are available uh so basically you can design your website uh, you can create your content uh, design the look and feel through which you can showcase your content on your website to other users so that's about cms the content management system and uh, great news is uh, very soon we're rolling out our own native cms in the sense that you will be able to create your own content such as uh, uh, different types of content types and you can always customize the look and feel of it through the lightning community builder so that's really exciting news because we will soon going to have our own native cms all right thank you so much uh, shubhi so uh, i think we are uh, pretty close to uh, running out of time uh, let's just take one more last question for nitesh around uh, so there is a question around what if uh, as a customer i am not a member of the community will i still be able to access it as a non member exactly so there is a functionality of guest users in the community so it's a responsibility of a community admin or a community manager if he wants his community to be accessed by normal public people who are not part of salesforce he can enable a guest user option inside the community builder uh, from there if he enables that option any user any public user who is not sales, who is not part of salesforce can access it and can access lot of content in the community okay so um, yeah i think that's pretty much uh, what we have i mean what we could cover uh, from the questions angle from for today's uh, topic 
Uh, I'm sure you have a lot more questions. We do have a lot more other questions that we could not go through today. But feel free to uh, uh, post them on our forums and feel free to join our Trailblazer community group for Asia Pacific and India based, uh, India time zone based webinars. Uh, we'll keep posting about new, new webinars that are coming up and you can also get all the recordings and slides and stuff of the old webinars as well uh, from the spun that group itself directly right a, a way to basically stay in touch with us right and uh, with that uh, i'd like to thank our amazing panel of speakers and uh, uh, specialists today thank you so much guys and thank you so much for everybody uh, who's joined us today to uh, learn about the community cloud uh, the community cloud is a very big topic and we hope to probably bring one more webinar in the future to talk more about management and uh, there are features like moderation and stuff that you might be interested in uh, and there is also this new gamification features that are coming out that uh, that you can use to engage your community members and stuff uh, let's hope uh, we can do one more webinar soon in the future to give more information on that and i'm sure our panel our pe uh, panel of uh, speakers and specialists are uh, all the data for that and with that thank you so much for joining and we'll see you for the next webinar thank you